Hello children, in this video we shall deal with the structure of the skeletal muscle. So let us go into the cross section of the skeletal muscles to zoom into the organization of the various muscle bundles and the skeletal muscle fibers. So now I have pulled out a cross section of the skeletal muscle. We know the skeletal muscles are connected with the bones and this is the muscle which is arranged on the biceps or the muscles of the biceps. Now you can see how the muscles are organized in our body. The skeletal muscle consists of a number of muscle bundles. See, I have pulled out one muscle bundle. See, there are a number of muscle bundles. So if I in the cross section, you can see it like circles. See, a number of muscle bundles. So, each skeletal muscle has a number of such muscle bundles. And these muscle bundles are held together by a collagenous connective tissue called fascia. That collagenous connective tissue, I will just shade it with white. So, this intervening region. So, between the muscle bundles, there is a collagenous connective tissue called fascia and these muscle bundles are also known as fascicles. So, another name for muscle bundles is fascicles. See what is shaded in white, the intervening portion is the collagenous connective tissue called fascia. So, what is this indicative is a skeletal muscle and inside each skeletal muscle, there are number of muscle bundles. And these muscle bundles are also known as fascicles. And these fascicles are held together by a collagenous connective tissue called fascia. Now each of these muscle bundles, now look at the cross section through the muscle bundle. So I pulled out one muscle bundle and look at the cross section. They in turn comprises a number of muscle fibers and that one muscle fiber I have pulled out, see. So just like a hierarchy, so the skeletal muscle, it comprises a number of muscle bundles and the muscle bundles comprises a number of muscle fibers. So this can be observed in cross section. So once again reiterating the hierarchy, just like a hierarchy, in the skeletal muscle, that is a cross section, you can see a number of a bundle of muscle bundles. So you can see it arranged together and in cross section it appears to be circles. These are called muscle bundles or fascicles and the fascicles in turn, see I pulled out one fascicle in turn comprises of a number of muscle fibers. So, remember it in the form of a hierarchy. So, a uh, quick uh, review, skeletal muscles comprises of a number of muscle bundles or fascicles and muscle bundles or fascicles comprises of a number of muscle fibers which are the structural and functional unit of the skeletal muscle. Now, we have studied about the muscle fiber, it is elongated, cylindrical, unbranched. And also they are multinucleated. And these nuclei are located at the periphery. Besides this, it bears striations, dark and light striations, alternating striations. So I am showing now what I am shading is the dark striations and it is alternating with light striations. Therefore, this muscle is also known as striated muscle. Now, the striations is due to the presence of two sets of myofibrils or myofilaments.
they are the thin filament called actin and thick filament called myosin. So, you can see in the muscle fibers you can see thin and thick filaments are arranged. The thin filaments are called actin and the thick filaments are called myosin. Now, the way they are arranged? They are arranged alternatively, parallelly, side by side with their edges overlapping. So, the arrangement is very, very relevant. How are they arranged? Alternatively, parallelly, side by side with their edges overlapping. Now, other structures associated with the muscle fiber like any other cell it is surrounded by a plasma membrane. What I am highlighting in blue is the plasma membrane because it is a structural and functional unit it is a cell. So, any cell is surrounded by a plasma membrane. Here the name of this plasma membrane is called sarcolemma. Then it has the cytoplasm inside and that is called sarcoplasm. Not only that, there is an endoplasmic reticulum inside the muscle fiber and that is called sarcoplasmic reticulum which stores calcium ions. So, that is about the muscle fibers. So, once again talking about the smallest unit of the skeletal muscle called the muscle fibers. The muscle fibers have a straighted appearance. The skeletal muscle fibers have a straighted appearance that is because of the thin and thick filaments. The thin filaments are called actin and the thick filaments are called myosin filaments. They are arranged alternatively, parallelly, side by side with the edges overlapping. Besides that, being a cell, the covering is called the plasma membrane and here in this context it is called sarcolemma. The cytoplasm is called sarcoplasm and the endoplasmic reticulum in the muscle cell fiber is known as the sarcoplasmic reticulum which is the storehouse for calcium. So, from this slide I am taking a recap once again in cross section through the skeletal muscle. Uh, skeletal muscle comprises a number of bundle muscle bundles and these muscle bundles are also called fascicles and they are held together by a collagenous connective tissue called fascia. Now, I pulled out one muscle bundle. Now, inside each muscle bundle there are number of muscle fibers. Now, I pulled out one muscle fiber and inside each muscle fiber I arranged the myofibrils or myofilaments. So, you have got the hierarchy. Skeletal muscle, muscle bundles, muscle fibers and within the muscle fibers arranged side by side are the myofibrils or myofilaments. Now, let us zoom into the muscle fiber to see that straighted appearance. So, now what we are going to see is the ultra structure. of the muscle fibre showing the striations. So, we are looking into the striations in detail, leaving aside the other features only we are going to look into the striations and demarcate the different regions of the striated portion. Now, what I am drawing are the thick filaments or myosin filaments. I drew four of them. See these are parallel then they are alternating with the thin filaments. The thin are called the actin filaments. Now, we are going to demarcate some important regions. Now, focus at this region of the striated portion through the muscle fiber. See this region which I have highlighted with a rectangle and I am doing adjustments with this rectangle to only emphasize that region which exclusively comprises the thin filaments. See 
this comprise of only thin filaments what is within this rectangle only comprise thin filaments if i'm highlighting you can see one thin filament the second thin filament third thin filament and the fourth thin filament this region is called the i band i stands for isotropic it is similar to saying homogeneous we have learned homogeneous with respect to chemistry or biology homogeneous means similar now very adjacent to this i band is another band and see this what i have highlighted here you can see in the second rectangle that is highlighted you can see the full length of the thick filament what is the thick filament called myosin along with the overlapping edges of the thin see overlapping edges of the thin on both the sides this band is known as the a band the meaning of a band an isotropic band just like heterogeneous so you can see the a band comprises the entire length of the myosin plus the overlapping edges on either sides it's overlapping with the thin filaments so this is the a band so we can see i is alternating with a band again the next i when i'm drawing the next i see it's only comprising the thin filaments again the next a band it is comprising both the thick and thin full length of thick and the thin which portion the overlapping regions of the thin see now focus at the i band at the center of the i band there is an elastic line of fiber once again at the center of the i band there is an elastic fiber and that fiber is known as the z line so right across every i band i'm going to draw the elastic fiber and the region of the muscle fiber between two z line is called sarcomere very very important this is the functional unit of contraction so what is a sarcomere the portion of the muscle fiber between two adjacent z line so the next will be with the next z here also this another sarcomere now what is projected is correctly the full sarcomere first of all you must define what is the z line z line is an elastic fiber running through the middle of the i band and the portion between two z lines of the muscle fiber constitute the sarcomere which is the functional unit of contraction similarly running through the center of the a band there is a line fibrous line fibrous membrane this is called the m line holding the thick filaments so running across the center of the a band there is another line and this line is called m line m line center of the a band is the m line clear now we have indicated the two bands i band once again it exclusively comprises the thin filaments see the i comprise only thin only thin not including the overlapping edges and at the center of the i band is the z line now talk about the a band the a band comprises the whole length of the myosin or thick filament along with that we are having the overlapping edges of the thin filament so when we look into a band the center of the a band which comprises only the myosin filaments so i am going to draw with yellow i am going to indicate the center which comprises only the myosin i hope you understood i have adjusted this triangle to focus only the portion of the a band comprising only myosin exclusively myosin this region is called the h zone see h zone so h zone is in the middle of the a band it does not include the overlapping region see if i'm strongly highlighting you can see it does not include the overlapping thick thin 
filaments. This region is not inclusive. It only comprises the central portion exclusively of myosin filaments. So, with that, the banding pattern through the ultra structure of the muscle fiber is done. So, once again, you can see this alternate thick and thin filaments arranged alternatively parallelly side by side with the edges overlapping. Then, first of all, we have to identify the I band and a band, I band remember it is exclusively comprising the thin filaments or actin filaments and A band comprises the thick filaments along with the margins with which are overlapping with the thin filaments. Now running through the center of the I band is a Z line and the two region between two adjacent Z line is called the sarcomere which is a functional unit of muscle contraction. Now talking about the A band, we saw the A band is, this whole thing is the A band which means it comprises the entire length of the myosin plus the overlapping edges of the actin filaments and within the A band the central portion which comprises exclusively of the head uh, of the thick filaments or myosin filaments called the H zone and right across center bisecting the A band is the M line. So, remember the line bisecting the A band is called M line whereas the line bisecting the I band is called the Z line. Z line has relevance with respect to muscular contraction because when the Z lines come closer together which it means that the sarcomere is shrinking which means muscle is contracting. When the Z line moves away it means that the sarcomere is extending and that is how the muscle is relaxing. So, this is the ultra structure through the muscle fiber. Next we are going to learn the structure of the actin or thin filaments and the structure of the myosin filaments or thick filaments. First let us look into the actin filaments, it is a polymer, it is a polymer protein, it comprises four proteins, globular protein, F actin, tropomyosin and troponin. So, the four constituents of actin filaments are the globular protein, F actin, tropomyosin and troponin. So, now let us build the actin filament. Actin filament comprises of a number of monomeric units. See, this is a monomer. See, I have drawn some monomers and these are globular in outline globular in outline. So, this is the globular protein. So, it is also known as G actin. Now, many such G actins are organized or constructed together to form the filamentous actin. So, many such of these gets organized together. I am going to join them together. See, end to end. So, the monomeric unit joins to form a polymer. G actin, a number of G actins join together. See, so one G actin and a number of G actins together form the F actin. What does F stands for? Filamentous actin. So from G actin, I constructed an F actin. Similar diagrams drawn here. This is the G actin, and like that we have one F actin. Similarly, I am going to draw a second F actin. You know how F actins are formed? A number of G actins together forms a polymer called F actin. So, now I have two F actins. Now, these two F actins are parallel to one another like and running straight. What we have to do is they have to coil around each other, helically coil around each other. So, one F actin I am drawing. Now, the second F actin is going to be helically coiled. This is the way it is coiled in the actin filament. So, you can see the second diagram where two F actins are helically coiled around each other. Now, third we are going to incorporate the third protein 
The third protein is a filament. See this green color structure is the third filament or the third protein. So into this constructed effactin with green color I am going to show F, uh, the tropomyosin, the third filament is rope like or thread like. There are two such tropomyosins and these two tropomyosins are going to wind around the effactin. See, this is one tropomyosin and the second tropomyosin. See the way it is organized in the, th in the fourth diagram. You can see the tropomyosin which are thread like, two of them, two in number are closely associated, coiled around the F actin. And last protein I am going to incorporate is troponin. Troponin is a globular protein. See, it is indicated here. And this tro troponin is actually found on tropomyosin. See, so I am drawing it on tropomyosin. On active sites on the tropomyosin. So, with white I will draw some active sites here and there, some active sites. So, on those active sites I am going to show troponin bound. So, you can see here and there troponin is bound where? On the active sites on the tropomyosin. And then we have to coil these two, this tropomyosin and this tropomyosin with the attached troponin on this to construct the actin. So, now I am going to add our troponin here and there. Here one troponin, here another troponin and they are arranged or found on the active sites. Now I have constructed a complete actin. Though it is called thin filament, it is complex, it comprises four proteins namely G-actin, F-actin, tropomyosin and troponin. Remember G-actin is the monomeric unit of F-actin. The number of such G-actins together forms the F-actin. Like we get one F-actin and two F-actins and these two F-actins are not running parallel, they are coiled around each other. So that is how I do the coiled version. Then, the tropomyosin. Tropomyosin are two thread like structures which are indicated here in green and on the active sites there is a fourth protein that is attached called the troponin and now this tropomyosin is closely bound or wraps the effactin and now we get the complex structure which is finally shown in the fourth step in this diagram. So, zooming through this. So, now we have all the four proteins incorporated. This is G actin. And a number of G actin formed a polymer. There are two such polymers called the F actins, filamentous actins. Then look the green color rope like structures that is called the tropomyosin. And on the active sites on the tropomyosin, there is the fourth protein called troponin that is bound. So, you can see how from G actin, F actin is constructed, then the tropomyosin is incorporated and finally all four uh, proteins are incorporated and assembled to form the thin filament called actin filament. Now, moving on to the thick filament. The thick filament is called the, uh, is called the myosin which comprises of the monomeric units called meromyosin. So, myosin is also a polymer of the monomer called meromyosin, more simpler structure. So, first let us study the structure of one meromyosin. This is a meromyosin, it has the head, globular head. short arm or like a neck and a tail. So, I have shown all the three parts of a meromyosin namely head, short arm 
and tail. Now the head and arm constitute the heavy meromyosin and the tail constitute the light meromyosin. So this is the monomeric unit. Many such meromyosins are organized, assembled together to form the myosin. So I am going to make a number of meromyosins. This is the tail that is highlighted, tail. I am going to draw a number of meromyosins. The tail is drawn first with yellow in color. Then, then the short arm or neck is drawn, and the third part is the globular head. Now what I am going to do is I am going to assemble it together, attach it together. So this will come attached to this, this, this. we have a number of meromyosins attached end to end and this forms the myosin which is the polymer of meromyosin. So you can see how many meromyosin constitute this myosin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 monomeric meromyosins joined together forms the polymer called myosin which constitute the thick filament. Now I told you about the parts of the meromyosin. The tail is called the light meromyosin whereas the globular head and the short arm constitute the heavy meromyosin. Importance of the globular head, it is very very important. It is an ATPase. It has site for binding with ATP. So, the ATP binds at the globular head and here only the ATP gets hydrolyzed into ADP and P and the energy that is released is stored in the head. The energy as a result of hydrolysis is stored in the head and the second function it is this head forms a site for binding with actin. So, when we learn muscle contraction, we can see this head fixed into the active sites on the actin filament. So, the second function, look at the head, the head of the myosin fits into the active site. See this is the active site correctly on the tropomyosin of the actin filaments. So what happens is that this troponin which is found on the active site gets detached. It gets displaced. So I am showing it like this. It gets displaced and when it gets displaced this active site is exposed. See it is exposed and into this active site the myosin head fits in and this fixing into the active site and pulling the actin filaments a lot of energy is utilized and I told you how is the energy obtained. The energy is obtained when ATP gets hydrolyzed into ADP plus P that energy is stored in the head. So with this energy the work is done for fixing into this active site and pulling the actin filaments. So that is the relevance of the globular head. So the two important functions of the globular head is one, it is a site for the ATP to bind and hydrolysis of the ATP takes place and not only that, it is a globular head 
that binds to the active site on the actin or the active site found on the tropomyosin. So, that is regarding the structure of the actin or thin filaments, myosin or thick filaments. Last, let me wrap up this class with the two types of muscle fibers. So, we know the basic unit of the skeletal muscle or any muscle is the muscle fibers. There are two types of muscle fibers. One is the red muscle fibers and second type of muscle fibers is the white muscle fibers. So, you get one difference is with respect to the color. The red muscle fibers are red in color whereas the muscle white muscle fibers are whitish or pale color. So, that is the first difference. The parameters are indicated in the center. Then talking about the myoglobin content. So, first of all what is myoglobin? Like hemoglobin, myoglobin is a pigment that carries oxygen. So, it is an oxygen carrying pigment. It is high in the red muscle fibers whereas the amount or quantity of myoglobin in the white muscle fibers is very less. Now talking about the mitochondria quantity, it is again high in the red muscle fibers and very less in number in the white muscle fibers. And last sarcoplasmic reticulum is reverse, it is few in number in the red muscle fibers whereas it is high in number in the white muscle fibers. So, once again the four basic difference between red muscle fibers and white muscle fibers. First with respect to the color, red muscle fibers are red in color whereas white muscle fibers are pale or white in color. The myoglobin content is high in red muscle fibers whereas low in white muscle fibers. Mitochondria content is high in red muscle fibers whereas low in white muscle fibers. Then sarcoplasmic reticulum content is low. The number is low in the red muscle fibers whereas it is high in the white muscle fibers. So, we got four basic difference. Now, with respect to both muscle fibers produces ATP, but here we know that the content of mitochondria is less. If mitochondria is less means ATP production definitely is also low and it produces ATP. in the absence of oxygen. Why we say absence of oxygen? Because the pigment that carries oxygen is low. So, is there sufficient oxygen in the production while producing ATP? There is less oxygen. So, such muscle fibers are also called as anaerobic muscle fibers. So, another name for white muscle fibers is anaerobic muscle fibers. The reason is that they produce ATP and the quantity of ATP is less. The reason to that is we can correlate with the number. Less uh, mitochondria. It produces that less quantity of ATP in the absence of oxygen. Why less oxygen? Because it is correlated with the myoglobin. The myoglobin which is the pigment carrying oxygen is less in number. So, in that uh, scarcity of oxygen or in the absence of oxygen it produces ATP and such muscle fibers are called anaerobic muscle fibers. On the other hand the red muscle fibers are called aerobic. We know why it is justified. They are called aerobic muscle fibers because they produce ATP in the presence of oxygen and why oxygen is present in enormous quantity because look at the quantity or the number of myoglobin very high which means there is a lot of oxygen. So, ATP is produced in large numbers in the presence of oxygen therefore red muscle fibers also known as aerobic muscle fibers and white muscle fibers is also known as anaerobic muscle fibers. So, with that I wind up this video concentrating on the skeletal muscles. I hope you have understood. Thank you.